Well, thank you everyone for clicking on this video, part two of the weekly Q&A. Make sure after you watch this, you watch part one of the Q&A, especially if you submitted questions to me on Twitter. Uh, because they may have been answered in the previous video if they're not answered in this one. It's also a reminder to you to follow the show on Twitter, so that way when I ask for your questions, that's the way to submit them. That way you can get them in. And make sure you smash that subscribe button if it's your first time checking this out, video channel out. Or if you watch other videos and for some maddeningly reason, you just haven't subscribed. All right, go ahead. And if anything, you know what you could do is you can be like some of the longtime subscribers and you can watch as the hairline over the past decade has slowly started to creep back. It's still mostly there though, jerks. I just want to be clear to that. But you know, we get older and times change. I'm 40 now, like it starts to creep back a little bit. And I have said before that, you know, once I got to 40, whatever happens, happens. But at least I made it there with most of the damn hair on my head. But you could have a game. Like maybe I should start rocking a headband like LeBron James used to do before he got the really shitty hair plugs. And then every so often you see the headband start to creep up and up and up even more. <laughs> All right, anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this second part of the Q&A for this week. George, 1847-7530. Again, folks, do something with these goddamn Twitter handles. Why isn't WWE pushing Jeff Hardy? He's one of the most popular superstars. Was more popular than Cena in 08 and 09. I can't fucking tell you. Like, maybe there's a piece of they don't trust him. There's a consistency issue. A reliability issue. I don't know. But while you have him and you're paying him, I agree. You should absolutely be using him. Like, it's astounding to me how they underutilize some of these folks and don't get nearly their full potential out of them. At... Tamiba 2, what move or finisher do you think hurts the most? Uh, probably the Dino Bravo cheese grater. And you say, wait a second, what the fuck is a Dino Bravo cheese grater? Well, that's where you're sitting on your recliner at home at night, maybe smoking a Marlboro that you had just smuggled in from to, to Canada, and you get shot, bang, bang, dead, 18 times, many in your head. You get more holes in you than Swiss cheese. The Dino Bravo cheese grater. You could also say <laughs> the blue blazer buckle buster, but. <laughs> oh, God. He gets older, but that doesn't mean his taste get any better. <laughs> Talk about dark side of the ring. It's the dark humor of the Schlag Daddy, huh? <laughs> At Mike Rock 304. Out of the two, who is more overrated, Gail Kim or AJ Lee? Holy shit, is this a good question. These are two that I never got, although I think Gail Kim was certainly better in her time in TNA. For me, it's going to be AJ Lee. People talk about her like she's some type of fucking legend or icon, and the reality is she was just barely a blip on the radar. I think it's her. At Connor Holt 16, if Velveteen Dream ever got sent to WWE, which brand do you think would have better suited him? Uh, I think Raw would have been the better choice. I think Raw would have been the better choice. At Poor of Shankar 1, would Attitude Era megastars like Austin and Rock have become equally as big during the Hogan era in the mid to late 80s with their same gimmick, or would they have crashed and burned in front of the Hogan monster who, quite frankly, was as big as a real-life Superman back then? Uh, that's a great question. Um... The Austin gimmick wouldn't have worked with having that authority figure and the dynamics of him versus Jack Tunney don't work the same as him versus Vince. He would have had some problems. I think The Rock could have worked to a degree, but he would have run into some problems. And even as a heel, like in that time, in that place in the business, you're not trying to have your heel sit there and be able to poon Hogan on the mic. That's not a good thing. That's not going to draw money. You're just ruining the golden goose at that point. So I think it's less about the Hogan monster per se and just more about like the stylistic type of fit would have been a challenge for them. They were talented enough. I think they would have been able to figure out a way to become big stars still. But in the gimmicks that they had at the time, the gimmicks fit the times that they were in. They wouldn't have necessarily fit the times before. Um, at Abnor Joseph, there have been rumors that AEW executives are not getting along lately. Have you heard any of those rumors and can you see it being true? I think there was some talk about like the Bucks and Omega, like the elite guys, aren't seeing eye to eye with Cody and vice versa. I could certainly see that happening um, because you figure like Omega and the Bucks are tight as hell. Whereas Cody's more like a, a partner by convenience and circumstance and situation. And I think it, it, it's okay that 
Folks don't always have to get along. You don't, to be clear in those type of leadership roles, you don't want people that always see eye to eye and everything. You want a little bit of creative conflict, but you also need that those varying viewpoints and um, various thought process and various perspectives. Like, it's okay, you don't have to always get along perfectly. You gotta be able to work together at the end of the day. Um, you know, is that a sign that there could be problems down the road? Maybe, but probably a little early to be worried too much about that. At Hashira 95, what would be the perfect WrestleMania main event? Um, the Rock versus Roman Reigns or RVD versus John Morrison when Tasteless Tony T is a special guest referee. <laughs> God, the second one would be fantastic. <laughs> and for that, Hashira 95, you have earned a foul on Twitter. <laughs> At Blue Goblin 01. Would you pay to watch Hogan from his prime politic against the Breakfast Club? Um, how could you not? Like, could you imagine? Like, imagine Hogan saying, I'm not really feeling that, brother. I don't think that's good for me, brother. I'm going to have to pass on that one, brother. Oh, my God. And then imagine, like, if he did a Breakfast Club... Versus old school like WWE, and you had like it was Hogan, HBK, Bret Hart, in Stone Cold on one side, versus like the Triple H's and the Cena's and the Orton's. Like, could you imagine the political magic that would take place? Holy shit! Political debates, my ass. That would be must see pay per view TV. At Gabriel, 9666808. Again, guys, fix your damn Twitter handles. What was the funniest botch of all time? I will have to go with the original Sin Cara tearing his patella tendon at Survivor Series 2011. <laughs> he went up, he's like, ah, my knee, my knee, my knee. <laughs> no. I'm surprised, Gabe, that you even have to ask this question, Gabe. Because you know damn good and well, and you probably did this just to fucks with me. You know there is only one answer to this. It was WCW. It was Sin. <laughs> the big boot of justice from the middle row. <laughs> Sin went up to the second row. <laughs> Johnny A. said he needed to expand his offensive repertoire. I said, we need you to sit there and do something different. Bring it home big. You're in a fatal four-way for the world title. And then I said, sitting and laying in the damn rig with his leg busted and bent like four different places. Steiner bumps into his fucking broken leg a couple of times. And they just try to have the match around the bro Sid as he lays nah, in the rig. <laughs> What do you think about story and build up and execution? Nothing in the history of wrestling as a botch will ever fucking top that one. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh my goodness. Demarcus Flowers, what are your thoughts on Randy Orton and Matt Riddle teaming up to form RK Bro and the reports that Orton asked to work with Riddle? I would ask Orton, what the fuck is wrong with you? I realize you don't give a shit anymore and you're just there to collect a big paycheck, but really, dude? Your standards have dropped that much. You want to work with that piece of crap? <laughs> uh, at Little DJ Boy, what's your favorite type of video to make? I personally love your Q&As. I make a list of questions ready to ask whenever you're doing a video. Um, well, let's not make a list of questions. It's not that important, but I appreciate the thought. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy the Q&As, especially when you guys make some good questions like you have this go around. Those are, those are a lot of fun. Um, you know, sometimes the random rants are always going to be the favorites, but I haven't done as many of those in recent years. At Mr. Underscore Jinx 5 what are your thoughts on the ECW mass transit incident? Yes, he was a minor, even though he didn't represent himself as a minor. New Jack went too far, you know, but do I feel a ton of sympathy for him? No. Admittedly, no. 
Uh, is that kind of harsh and crass? Yes, it's again, it's a harsh and crass world. It was kind of the business at the time. Like, reality is, if it wasn't New Jack, it might have been somebody else who would have fucked him up in some way. New Jack maybe just took it to a different level. Uh, at J underscore Drody underscore zero three. General thoughts on the Street Profits as a tag team. Good tag team. They've got some sizzle to them and some steak. Like, they're, like if you're building a tag team division, I would think like you want these guys as one of your featured acts because you can do a variety of different things with them. At Jeremy A 0374 Again, guys, with the gut team Twitter handles. Like, stop that. Which was funnier? JBL getting KO'd by Joey Styles? <laughs> Luster breaking Bob Holly's neck? Pewter also almost breaking Angle's arm. JBL getting KO'd by Joey Styles. Because JBL's an asshole and always liked to bully folks. And of all people, he got punked out by fucking Joey Styles. <laughs> At Daniel W. Clark, DWC, how come you stopped doing your wrestling theme videos from the room that had all the wrestling posters in it? Um... I'm just being lazy and not moving all of my stuff down to the man room on the lowest level to do it. So uh, I need to get back to doing that, actually. At Rick Styles, 1985, if Adam Cole comes to the main roster. I'm, I'm sorry, you said Adam Cole. And What's your question? Uh, what are some things he and WWE could do to make him a top star? Ah, God. Nothing. He ain't top star material. How about that? <laughs> At the Outcast Trash. Ooh. Why do you allow Cody Rhodes to live in your mind rent-free so easily? We know he's an arrogant little heel outside of the ring, but many wrestlers are, and one would have to think that he's far from the worst. Ah. See, I love this question. Because this is kind of pushing on me a little bit and challenging me a little bit, and I like that. Um, and I like the, the fact that it's going to be able to allow me to talk for a moment or two about, you know, have what it means when people live rent free in your head, like the importance of not allowing that to happen. I would say this, if Cody Rhodes truly absolutely lived rent free in my head, um, then I wouldn't watch AEW. I wouldn't review AEW. I wouldn't sit there and talk about him at all. Or if I did, it would only be in ways to totally shit on them or shit on him. And I think what can also be said is that I've actually said some good things about Cody Rhodes, even though he doesn't deserve him, the piece of shit. Like, living rent-free in my mind would be like a, I'm an obsessed with him, like I think about it all the time type of scenario, and that's not the case. I do agree with the, the notion of, like, it's, it's a general important lesson in life, and that's why I just followed you on Twitter because of this question, is... It's just general advice I would give to folks is a lot of times we get bothered by and we get emotional about uh, things and people that we shouldn't because you'll continue to stew and fester and for many cases that other person doesn't even get it a second thought. They never think about it again. So why are you continuing to fester about it? Why are you stewing about it? Why are you allowing it to be a problem? At that point in time, the problem, no matter what they said or no matter what they did, the problem is not them. The problem is you. Everybody that you let be in your mind or in your heart, that is a conscientious decision that you have to control. If they're not making you dollars, it doesn't make sense. If it's not productive to you and it creates some type of negative vibe or aura for you or negative energy and puts you in a bad place and a bad mindset, then you really need to sit, step back and evaluate, like, how do I get these people to stop living rent-free in my head? And again... The problem is not them. The problem is you. If they wronged you, you know what? Congratulations. Life is the shit sometimes. Life fucking sucks. Life is going to knock you down and challenge you. You wouldn't have gotten that test if you couldn't have potentially handled it. You might not have a fucking clue how to be able to overcome. You might not have a clue to understand like how to deal with it, but you have that ability to do so. So I appreciate the question. He does not live rent-free in my mind. 
Hey, are we gonna ask that question every time I don't like somebody? Or don't like a wrestler? I gotta, I mean, we gotta be clear here, a lot of it's also done for creative effect too. You know what I mean? Like, it's part of like playing a persona and a character online. So, um, yeah. Like if I sat there and tweeted daily about how much he sucked or he sat there and shit on absolutely every single thing that he did, then yeah, I think he could make the statement that why are you letting him live rent free in your head? And that'd be a valid, very valid question. But in this case, I don't think that's true. I really don't. There are other people that over the years that have lived rent free in my head, in my mind, and in my heart. And that's my problem to deal with and has been my problem to deal with. And I can tell you, like, I can certainly acknowledge some of those. He ain't in that group, I promise you. H Review 73, which storyline angle reveal do you think was the worst? Vince as the higher power, Rikishi as the driver who ran over Austin, or DDP being revealed as the stalker of Taker's wife, Sarah? I think that was the worst one. As everybody knew what Kimberly looked like at the fucking time, and why is he sitting there and stalking Taker's wife? It was just so stupid. It's so counterintuitive to who DDP was and what the DDP character was about. Like Vince as the higher power made all the sense in the world no matter how stupid it was. Rikishi as the driver ran over Austin, you know, could make some logical sense and you can make that work, but DDP as stalking Sarah was just fucking stupid. Just stupid. Um, let's see here. We got any other questions that are actually good? Or not repeats of questions that I've answered before. At Mid Carter J, who's the better Bravo? Johnny Bravo or Dino Bravo? <laughs> One's fake and the other's dead, so I'll go with the fake one. <laughs> At Charles, 1030, 1995. Are you posting your fucking date of birth as your damn Twitter handle, folks? Stop with all the numbers shit. Makes you look fake. Stop that. Be more creative and original with your damn Twitter handles. Come on, son. If Triple H had a son who became a wrestler, how long would it take for him to win the WWE title? He'd come out of the fucking womb with that thing cemented on him. <laughs> At Edsel4, how did you come up with the whole assume Jeff Jarrett position thing? I, I know I've answered this in the past. Um, it was a play on something that uh, the Bundy family used to do on Married with Children when they would make fun of the network that they were on at the time, Fox, they'd say, Al Bundy would say, assume Fox healing positions! And everybody would take like a different position. Like I took that and like made it my own thing. That's where the inspiration came from, was that all time comedy classic. Yeah, that's what it's about. Um, let's see here. Uh... At Al underscore Corleone, what's your opinion on this Velveteen Dream situation? The IWC calling him guilty, even though he's been before a judge and called innocent. Um, I, here's what I would say is that go watch my thoughts to the uh, first part of this weekly Q&A because I addressed that quite a bit there. At Colton587, what were your thoughts when WWF had to change its name to WWE? When they said that whole marketing campaign in 2002 to rebrand themselves, like get the F out, I said, no, all that happened was they got the fun out and it'll never be the same again. And by God, have I been fucking right about that one? I, I like to say how right I am about a lot of things all the time, which is a bit of a pride thing, but also a bit of an insecurity thing. But there are certain things that beyond a doubt, I've absolutely been correct about over the years and that was one of them. And that's probably one of the most prescient things I feel like I've ever actually said. You go back to 2002, like once they got the F out, all the fucking fun went with it and it has never, ever, ever been the same. Like almost two decades later, it's still awkward for me to say WWE. It feels like a lesser company. It feels like a lesser show. It is. Uh, but even just the name and the branding, like people still to this day call it the WWF and it hasn't been that since 2002. So yeah, and then at Kavachtha, will we be getting a 15 Reasons Cody Rhodes Suck video anytime soon? Nah, he ain't worth it, not right now. He'd have to do other more egregious stuff for me. I, I could have one ready easily, quickly, at any time. And I don't know that I need to limit myself to 15 Reasons, but nah, just not feeling that vibe right now, so I'm not gonna do that. 
But thank you guys, all of you, for submitting your questions for part two of this weekly Q&A. Make sure you go back and watch part one if you haven't done so already. Follow the show on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. I'm out.